Uh, here's a problem. A school fundraiser is selling poinsettias and chocolates. So Fred brought Fred bought three of these poinsettias and six chocolates and he pays $42. Sally, she bought four of poinsettias and four chocolates and she paid $43. So the question is, is how much does each poinsettia cost and how much does each chocolate cost? So the first part of the problem is we've got to come up with an equation. And um, in this case we're going to come up with two equations. Because there's two things we don't know. How much does each point set a cost? Why don't we do P? So let's say let's let P equal the cost of one point setta. And why don't we do C for the cost of one chocolate. So Fred bought three of these poinsettias, so in other words his cost for that will be 3p, three, three poinsettias, plus six chocolates, and that was a cost of $42. Sally, her situation was she bought four poinsettias, and she bought four chocolates, and she paid $43. So what we've got here is a system of equations and we're looking for the P and the C that would make these two equal. So we've got three ways that we can solve this system. One way is graphing. A second way that we've learned is substitution. And a third way that we've learned, so graphing substitution is uh, elimination. And really we could solve this equation all three ways. The problem with graphing is we pretty much have to write every equation as y equals, in this form, mx plus b, so that we can draw the graph. And the problem with drawing the graph manually is it's going to be very difficult probably to find that point of intersection and know exactly what it is. We could use the graphing calculator where are we? Here we go. But remember they've they've all got to be y equals as well so we'd have to do a bit of algebra to isolate y. So I'm thinking Graphing's not maybe the best way to go about doing this. The substitution, we could, we could do substitution, but again, we'd have to isolate P or C and then substitute it into the other way. The thing that's kind of nice in this case with elimination is we just need to get the variables the same, the coefficients the same here, rather, uh, uh, of one of the variables, and then we can add or subtract. So I'm thinking I'm going to go with elimination here. And I'm going to multiply this top one by, uh, let's see, we could get these 12, right? So multiply this one by 4 and multiply this one by 3. So if I multiply the top one by 4, that's going to give me 12p plus 24c equals 168. And multiplying the bottom by 3 would give this. Now I'm ready to subtract. So 12p minus 12p is no p's. 24 minus 12 is 12c equals, now we've got to subtract this, 39, and then dividing by 12 gives a cost of Thirty nine divided by twelve. Three dollars and twenty five cents. So we've just figured out C. C was the cost of one chocolate. So we've got the cost of the chocolate. Now we just need the cost of the poinsettia. I'm gonna take the C and I'm gonna put it eh, might as well do this. They're both very similar. So four P plus four times three dollars and twenty five cents equals forty three 
four P plus four times three dollars and twenty five cents would be thirteen dollars. And now we can isolate P by subtracting thirteen. So that's thirty fourths. So seven dollars and fifty cents. So I can say then, I can answer the question. Poinsettias would cost seven dollars and fifty cents, and chocolates could cost would cost three dollars and twenty-five cents in this situation. Again, if this was a quiz, I would always go back and just check my answer and make sure that three poinsettias and six chocolates is forty-two dollars, and that four poinsettias and four chocolates would cost forty-three dollars. So there's one word problem where probably um, the el elimination method would be the, the quickest way to solve that one. Here's another scenario. Frank wants to rent a car. He's got two companies to choose from. Company A is renting cars for two hundred fifty dollars a week, but you also pay ten cents per kilometer. Company B is a little more expensive, three hundred twenty-five dollars per week, but you get uh, you only have to pay five cents per kilometer. So the question would be, which company should Frank choose? We've got to come up with our two equations. So company A, company A's cost. We'll use C. Let's do some variables here. So let's set C equal cost to rent. Always, always identify what your variables are, and um, let's use D for distance driven. So we could say cost is equal to um, company A. So here's company A. Cost is equal to two hundred and fifty dollars per week. So he's going to have to pay two hundred and fifty bucks right off the start and then he's going to have to add 10 cents so 0 0.1 times every kilometer drive so 0 0.01 times d whereas equation b cost is equal to um, where are we $325 plus 5 cents per kilometer and we have to solve solve this equation. Well this one's a little different than the other one. We actually have have C equals or Y equals. So if we had a graphing calculator we could simply enter the cost in or enter this as cost one. So cost equals 250 plus 0 0.1 times D of course, the calculator always uses y and x, but we know c is like the y value and d is like the x value here. The other one's 325 plus 0 0.05 times d or x. And now we're going to draw them. Now we've got to play around with the view window here a bit. So x is our distance. It doesn't make sense to have a negative distance. He's going to be driving something. And presumably he'll drive more than six kilometers. Let's let's go as high as 300 kilometers. It's reasonable to drive 300 kilometers in a week. And scale, let's go up by 50. The y value is the cost. So the cost isn't going to be negative. And we know the maximum cost, well, it's already 325 in this situation before he even leaves the parking lot. So why don't we go 500 for a cost? We'll go up by 100 on our scale. Let's see what we get now. All right, so we have two lines, but we have to go out a fair bit farther here to find the intersection point. So we need to make X much bigger. So we'll go to our view window, and um, it looked like it was much bigger, so I'm gonna go 2,000. We better go up by 500 now on our X scale. There we go. So we have a place where the graphs have crossed. So we can go to G solve or graph solve F5 
and find the intersection point. There it is. So 1,500 and 400. So x is 1,500. Now remember x is d. So d d equals 1,500. That was x. And y is our cost. c equals 400. So what we can say then is, is if he drives 1,500 kilometers, then both companies will charge the same amount, $400. If he's going to drive less than 1,500 kilometers, we can see from the graph that the cost in this situation is less. So it's cheaper to use plan A, company A, if he's, he's going to drive less than 1,500 kilometers, because plan A is the cheaper one to start with, only $250, but you pay more per kilometer. So if he's, if he's not going to drive 1,500 kilometers, if he's going to drive less than that, then he should go with company A, because it is, it is cheaper. But if he's going to drive more than 1,500 kilometers, then this company B, that was more expensive to start with, but cheaper per kilometer, eventually, as we can see from the graph, has become, become cheaper. Let's get the whole graph up there. Uh, you can see that this company here that was more expensive to start with, once we get past that intersection point, is, is cheaper from there on out. So we would, we would recommend this. Frank should choose company A if he plans on driving less than 1,500 kilometers. Otherwise, he should choose company B. So that was using a graphing calculator. You could manually graph it too, but uh, a fairly time-consuming process. So if you didn't have a graphing calculator and you didn't want to graph it, we could use an algebraic method. Now what I would suggest in this situation is since we know that C is equal to this and C is also equal to this, we've already got one of them isolated. Why don't we simply take that, because that's what C is, and substitute it in here. So use the substitution method. So 250 plus 0.1d, once we substitute that into the second equation, will simply equal 325 plus 0.05d. And already we just have a simple equation with one, one variable. So I'm going to minus this from this side. Okay, get all my d's on one side, so those would cancel out. That would be zero. Collecting my like terms here now, 0.1d minus 0.05d is plus 0.05d. And then subtracting 250 from both sides to isolate the d term gives us this, and then finally divide by the coefficient of d to isolate d. We can go to a calculator, 75 divided by 0 0.05 should give us our 1500. And then we can take this and substitute it back into this equation to get our cost. because we just found out that D was 1500. And if we did this, we would get 250 plus 0 0.1 times 1500 is 150. And there's our 400. So what we found out is if you, draw, if you pay $400, both companies would be the same if you drove 1500 kilometers. So now you'd have to look back and see, well, Company A was $250 to start with, so this would be the cheaper one until you hit 1,500 kilometers, and then the price of this would be the same as the price of this, and then once you start driving more than 1,500 kilometers, then Company B is going to start to be cheaper. So we could still come up with the same interpretation, but having the graph makes it very easy to tell that this one's cheaper 
if you drive less than 1500 kilometers and this one is more expensive um, initially but once you're driven more than 1500 kilometers plan B becomes the cheaper option